in conversation with a very special guest all the way from Pakistan. Please welcome Mr. Shah Mahmood Qureshi, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Oman. Lovely to be here. It's a great pleasure and honor to have you here, sir. So could you please tell our viewers what brings you to Oman? Well, it's the uh, Joint Ministerial Commission meeting taking place, and uh, the Foreign Minister leads the Pakistan delegation. And this is taking place after a gap of nine years. Wow. So I'm happy that uh, uh, there was a lull, and uh, uh, we have re-engaged, and uh, I've brought a delegation, and we'll be talking about a host of things mm -hmm. uh, to promote and build a multi dimensional relationship between Oman and Pakistan. We have a historic relationship. Absolutely. Uh, we want to build it further. Right, sir. So, like you said, that it took you about nine years, and uh, you came actually as a foreign minister of Pakistan back in 2010 twice, and recently also you met um, Yusuf Al Alawi, minister, foreign minister of Oman. How do you see the status of bilateral relations with Oman? As I said, there was a lull. And uh, when I met uh, from Mr. Lavi uh, on the sidelines of the UNGA, uh, we decided to re-engage. We decided to hold the Joint Ministerial uh, Commission meeting. Mm -hmm. I've just had a meeting with him. Mm -hmm. I've invited him to Pakistan. Ah. He accepted the invitation. Oh, really? I've invited the Foreign Secretary to come uh, for the political, uh, bilateral political consultations, mm -hmm. and he will be coming inshallah in 2019 2019 uh, yes and uh, we will make it happen is this going to be his first visit to pakistan uh, no the foreign minister's been there he's been there he's been there yes. and what kind of preparations or what exactly are you planning to do during his trip to pakistan well obviously it, uh, develop on the agreements that uh, we uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of mutually agree on uh, and uh, see how we can uh, promote a uh, economic partnership, mm -hmm. how we can promote investments in Pakistan. Uh, we have a Pakistan Oman investment uh, company. Right. Uh, I've met the foreign minister and I've suggested that uh, we should think of enhancing Oman's equity in this. Pakistan is ready for investments. Mm -hmm. We have a, a new setup. Uh, uh, in the board of investment uh, and we are encouraging investments uh, in Pakistan with the new economic corridor and Gawada being so close right. to, to, to Oman uh, there are great opportunities uh, for investments uh, in the special economic zones mm. that are being set up uh, three to begin with uh, bilateral trade mm. I think it does not uh, reflect uh, the warmth uh, it's not commensurate with the exceptionally warm political relationships that two countries enjoy. Mm -hmm. We need to uh, improve upon that. There's a great opportunity of uh, uh, Pakistan helping uh, Oman uh, reach, uh, sort of uh, achieve food security. And they can also invest in Pakistan in the food processing industry. Uh, I'll be meeting Mr. Murshadi, who is head of the uh, state reserve fund. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a meeting with the uh, Minister for the Royal Court in the morning. Right. We discussed the uh, defense cooperation mm -hmm. at the intelligence sharing between the two countries. Uh, regional issues were discussed mm -hmm. and I'm very happy with the discussions I've had so far. So do you see that in future the already existing brotherly relations between Oman and Pakistan are going to be better? Absolutely. I have no doubt in my mind that this is a unique relationship. There is a historic connection. 30% of Omanis have Baloch origin. Right. We're proud of that. Uh, there are Pakistanis serving in the uh, Oman armed forces. Mm -hmm. And that is a testament of the trust that the two countries have uh, built over the years. Absolutely, sir. And as we all know that Pakistan is literally a hop away from Oman. You know, once you take a hop, you'll probably end up in uh, Pakistan. So is there any prospect of uh, establishing ferry services with Oman or Gawadar? We are open to ideas that are mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. But do you think this kind of ferry service is going to complement Gawadar or CPAC in long run? 
the, the, the proposal is under consideration mm -hmm. uh, and we will, ex we will examine it mm -hmm. and see what can be done. And also, say recently, in fact, just last week, there was an announcement by government of Pakistan that they have made some ease in visa policy, and about 175 countries have been added to e-visa, while 50 on arrival visa. My question is, where is Oman in that category? Oman is high on the category. <laughs> Amongst the 50 uh, countries that will get visa on arrival, mm -hmm. Oman is one of them. Oh, really? Absolutely, absolutely, Oman is one of them. This is a new liberalized visa regime that we put in place. And the idea is to promote people-to-people uh, -people contact. Mm. The idea is to promote investments in Pakistan. And the idea is to promote tourism. Absolutely. Pakistan is a country which has such a rich heritage. Mm. Come and see the north. The mountains are phenomenal. Come and see the, uh, the Gandhara heritage. I was talking to the uh, ambassadors who have a sizable population, Buddhist population in their countries okay. like, like Japan, like Korea, like mm -hmm. China, mm -hmm. like Myanmar, you know, Thailand, uh, Bhutan, and Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is so much of interest that has been generated uh, because of this initiative. Kartarpur, the new corridor yes. that we plan to establish between India, India. And, and, and Pakistan. And look at the response the phenomenal response we got from uh, from Sikhs from all over the world uh, is very heartening that Pakistan's new government, government of Prime Minister Imran Khan, is undertaking initiatives to showcase the real Pakistan, Absolutely. the new Pakistan. Absolutely, sir. On that note, I just wanted to ask, what kind of role or what are your expectations from the expats living in Oman or across the world to help Prime Minister Imran Khan achieve his target of building new Pakistan? The expatriate community of Pakistan has been very good. They have been very supportive. And let me publicly uh, admit that, that today, if PTI is in government, the expat community of Pakistan has a significant role in it. You know, we are a party that was supported mm -hmm. and funded uh, by overseas Pakistanis. And we recognize that and we are grateful for that. PTI had never been in office. You know, there were no, we didn't have deep pockets like the old entrenched <laughs> political parties. And when I say deep pockets, you understand what I'm I saying. I absolutely understand. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying. So, it's the people. It's the people of Pakistan and the people, the expat community that helped us, uh, sort of, they catapulted us uh, mm. into office and we're grateful to them. We would want them to play a greater role in Pakistan through uh, investments in Pakistan, mm -hmm. by supporting Pakistan, by uh, being effective ambassadors of Pakistan in their respective uh, countries, cities, wherever they are, in their professions, and also making an intellectual contribution uh, to Pakistan. We have some outstanding professionals all over the world. Uh, we need them. Mm -hmm. uh, our institutions over the years have deteriorated and we need, uh, we need rejuvenation. Uh, we need fresh blood. Mm -hmm. And these uh, professionals uh, living abroad can come and contribute. Right. We would want them to come and visit Pakistan. Uh, let, let them take a decision that 2020 okay people take holidays right. take a decision Pakistanis take a decision that 2020 my vacation with my family is going to be in Pakistan two things it will reconnect you to Pakistan and it will help Pakistan because of tourism because of your visits you know it will generate resources for Pakistan. Mm. So it's a win-win situation. Absolutely. So like we talk, uh, spoke about the um, contribution from the expatriates, I think a lot of expatriates across the world have contributed towards the Dams Fund as well, and it has still, it's still an ongoing process. So um, on that note, I wanted to ask you, how do you see the relations of Pakistan in the region and with its neighboring countries? Uh, to begin with, let me thank the Pakistani community overseas for contributing so generously uh, to the dam fund. You know, 
Pakistan is in a semi-arid zone and we are moving towards water scarcity. Mm. Uh, water deficiency is becoming a huge challenge, not just for the region, uh, for Pakistan as well. Yeah. And that can have an impact on bilateral relations between uh, India and Pakistan. Mm. Uh, we need to address that. Governments have been in office, and the two traditional parties have been in office for almost four decades. Mm. People have been talking about uh, water, and nothing was done. This government plans to move ahead, and the people are contributing generously. So thank you for doing that. A. Uh, and the second part of your question was... The relations with the neighboring countries and neighboring in the region. Countries. Obviously, we want to have a peaceful neighborhood. We want to have good relations uh, in the neighborhood and beyond. Uh, when Prime Minister Imran Khan came into office, in his very first national address, he offered uh, peace yeah. to India. I remember said, that. Every step that you take towards peace, we will take two. Two steps, yes. Despite the Indian reluctance and hesitance, uh, we have gone ahead with Kartarpur. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it has been appreciated by many Indians all over the world. We have uh, uh, we are facilitating the peace and reconciliation process in uh, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and there has been some progress uh, in that as well. So let's keep our fingers crossed uh, till it happens. Uh, uh, we've uh, re-engaged with Iran, uh, mm. and uh, Prime Minister of Iran and myself had three meetings in the last five months. So that's again uh, a step towards confidence building. Uh, the Prime Minister and myself, we've been to China three times mm -hmm. and uh, we will be going to China again uh, for the Belt and Road uh, Forum uh, in April. Right. We've agreed on the second phase of CPAC with China and uh, the interest we see of China in Pakistan's investment and economic development is, is uh, uh, very encouraging. Similarly, uh, we, are, we have re-engaged uh, with the European Union. Mm -hmm. uh, we are thinking of uh, a new uh, uh, strategic enhancement uh, plan engagement with America, with the United States, our relations are on the mint. Yeah. And you can see that, uh, that the, the coldness is wearing off and there's a new warmth being generated. Uh, so these are all very good signs in the neighborhood, uh, I have been traveling uh, in the region, mm -hmm. and the idea is to promote and build a peaceful, stable neighborhood so that this region that has lagged behind uh, uh, becomes prosperous. There are investments here, uh, there are job opportunities created for the youth. 65% of our population falls in the category of youth. youth. Yeah. So we have to plan for our future. Right, sir. And actually, just last night, actually, the State Bank of Pakistan launched this mobile wallet scheme for the expatriates living across the world. So government of Pakistan is actually taking initiatives of engaging expats around the world to help, you know, build the economy of Pakistan. And uh, it's, 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 it's a tremendous job that, you know, government of Pakistan is keeping expatriates in mind, too. And on that very note, I have a very crucial question to ask. When can we expect Prime Minister Imran Khan to come to Oman? Soon. <laughs> How soon is that? Soon is soon. <laughs> and uh, I'm here to, to, to uh, uh, lay the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been traveling in the region uh, and uh, uh, engaging with the regional leadership. And Prime Minister Imran Khan is uh, very keen uh, to visit uh, Oman mm -hmm. and other regional countries. And inshallah. Yeah, because, you know, Pakistan consists the third largest population in Oman in the region. And everybody got really excited when Prime Minister Imran Khan was traveling to UAE and KSA. And they all really were hoping that, you know, one day, hopefully this year, Prime Minister Imran Khan would come down to Oman and meet everyone. Certainly. I would like, through you, uh, convey to our community, we're grateful for your support. And we, we've seen the, the support of the community wherever we go, whether we've been in UAE or we've been in uh, Saudi Arabia. I, I mean, just recently, we were in Doha, mm -hmm. and you saw 
the response of the community in the in the yes. in the in the stadium. You know, it's right. packed. Uh, so that is the level of response we're getting for the community. We will not disappoint the Omani's community. Absolutely. Thank you so much, sir, for talking to us. It was a great pleasure and honor once again to have you talk to us. Thank you. And hopefully see you soon next time with Prime Minister Ron Khan.